So, you know, I was working with thousands of animals, which very well in a slaughterhouse you will be too. When I was working at Tyson, my job was a backup killer. A backup uh, killer? Right. I was like the last line of defense as far as birds going into the skull tank alive. There was a rotary blade that would cut the, the chicken's throats and whatever missed the blade, it was all on my shoulders to make sure that that animal was killed. The notes have to be made contemporaneously yeah. every night, every single night. When you come home, just do it right away. Well, it depends. Like out. it depends on how how good you are with your memory. My first thing was wanting to take a bath to get all the bacteria and everything off me. And coming home covered in blood and feces was like the worst thing for me to have to deal with. An investigation to me is a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of commitment, a lot of effort, and a lot of hope. We've yet to have one that has resulted in nothing. They go into these hell holes and bring out the video. And what they show people has the potential to change the world. I lead a fairly simple lifestyle. I'm not really interested in a lot of junk material things stuff. It, it just doesn't fascinate me. I had a marriage and it was very lovely. I was married to a lovely man. Uh, I just, honest to God, didn't have time for it. I've never wanted children. I was sterilized when I was 22. Um, I read that there was a new procedure that was easy. And so I called up and said, can I be one of the first people to do this? I came to think that there's something wrong with wanting your own child, that there are so many homeless children in the world, so many orphans, that if you really want a child, why make a replica of yourself and your partner? I don't have animals. I travel all the time. And I don't miss not having animals because I believe that you should work to help them, not that you should accumulate them, possess them, and so on. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. I believe that the horrors in this world could not ever have been created by a loving God. I believe in kindness. I believe in personal responsibility. And I believe in being decent to people. This is a place where we had the back of a chicken uh, truck thing came open, and chickens just came tumbling out as the truck went down the road. About five of us came out here and caught all the chickens we could up and um, brought them back to the office and some of them went out to that sanctuary, the ones who were salvageable. Most of them weren't salvageable. Um, I'm sorry to do this but we, I have to turn around. There's a dove that's um, probably dead but I have to have a look because I'd never trust that they are. Sweetheart, is this you? Is this your life? Hello. I think I'm like a child who was raised by wolves in that my father was away most of the time. Um, my mother was uh, an English mother, which means she didn't dote and fawn on me. Um, I was an only child, so I had to make my own way a lot of the time. And my companion, my sibling, was my dog. I grew up to understand that dog's expression, that dog's feelings. And so, just as you might grow up with a brother or sister, you come to understand them, and they don't have to say anything to you for you to know what they're feeling. I think this might be a lost cause, chum. 
Perhaps that's what happened with me because it certainly is very painful to look at an animal's face or body posture and know that they have just been through something bad. And it's not imagination. I think it's because I learned that growing up for years with that dog. Is this your puppy? How long have you had this puppy? Two months. Two months? It's awful cold out here. Plastic barrel, you know, provides some uh, protection from the rain, but it's just not good enough. So we're going to get um, one of the houses off the truck. Um, my father had great anger that would well up from inside him. He had a fierce temper. And I work to not have it, but there are occasions when I really have almost done physical damage to people. Like what? The first incident that I remember is when I had just arrived in India. I was sitting at a table and I was drinking my soup. And I looked out, you could see the street from my dining room. And a man was beating, this um, bull came along pulling a cart and he obviously was having trouble. And as I watched, uh, the man started to really beat him. And then he lifted the bull's tail and he put the stick up into his rectum. And this bull screamed and then he collapsed. And the man s raised his stick and started to, and I dropped my soup spoon, ran out into the street. And I was just filled with so much anger and panic to stop this from happening to this being. And I got there and I tore the stick away from him. I was only about eight and a half probably. And I made him kneel down. I was just filled with rage. And this rage that is my father's rage just came up straight inside me. And he knew that he's lucky I didn't kill him. You look like a sorry soul. Oh my God, he's so thin. Look how thin he is. His bones are standing out. Is this the owner? Yeah. Well, from here you can see his hip bone sticking out in the back. And you can see his ribs. Yeah. And his backbone under that hair. This is a sort of winter hair that comes in if they're out in the cold. It sticks up. It's just, you know, uh, spindly. But under here, if you feel, that's his backbone. He doesn't have any muscle. He doesn't have any fat. He's not in good shape. He has nothing to really get him through. So he's gonna need to change his food. Well, I think more than that. Let's look at his gums. See, his gums are chalk white. That means he's anemic. What that means is he's probably got worms like whip worms, which are more serious than the regular stomach worms, round worms. Yep, yeah, I just shot him up with worm medicine out there. What'd you give him? Uh, it's like the yellow color. Do you have a vet? No, not a personal vet. What are you feeding him? Um, I had like some PMR, then I, uh, you got like any now? No, nah, I gave him a little bit earlier this morning. But you're out of food out. now? Yeah, so I was about to go get some now. All right. Go we... get another bag. I got to go to the hog farm over in Windsor. That's okay. where I get it from. Because he is stuff. in bad shape. He's basically being starved. I mean, that's what's happening to him. Do you want us to take him in, put him in the vet? It won't be any cost to you. I really appreciate it. Okay, we have to it. sign him over for that. Um, let me get my clipboard. Hang on a second. just a thing. He's one more thing that they have, I think. Sort of a passing nice idea. You've got yourself a pit. But the reality of care is not understood. So what's the verdict? Well, he's heartworm positive. Um, he's severely anemic, as we knew, and he suggested a blood transfusion. He said his red blood cell count was 12% versus 35 to 50%, which is normal. So he's he's pretty bad off. So um, we'll talk to Kashan. Yeah. Kashan? Hi, my name is Daphne. I'm calling from PETA. Okay, he's got heartworm disease. Do you Are you familiar with that? Mm-hmm. 
you are familiar with it. It's um, transmitted by mosquitoes, and usually what happens if it's untreated or you don't give the dog a preventive, uh, the worms lodge themselves in the dog's heart, and that's why some of his breathing is labored, if you've noticed. Um, and so that requires some pretty aggressive treatment. You know, I want to talk to you about putting the dog to sleep. Right, so you'd rather not have him back then? Okay, okay. Um, but you, you, you understand his serious condition and that he will be put to sleep. Okay, okay, bye bye. Yeah, I think he should go down right away. If you look at him, he uh, really looks miserable. His whole face looks miserable. Mm -hmm. So, will I you? I can see the pain in his eyes. Yeah, will you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. My first euthanasia experience was because I took some kittens who uh, had been abandoned by my neighbor to the local shelter. And I didn't realize they were going to be put down. I was very naive. I thought they'd find wonderful homes for them. But I happened to go into the back to have a look at the other animals, and I found they had been put down. And I was pretty shocked because obviously I'd betrayed them I'd, I'd taken them to this place and they had been killed. And it wasn't until much later that I realized that sometimes euthanasia is a gift to them. I, I had to study how to do it properly because we weren't taught to do it properly in the shelter that, where I started. There was a man who would just bring all the animals into a room and then he would stab them basically in the vicinity of their hearts with a needle that had never been changed in a long time and had barbs on it and so on. And the animals would thrash about. They would know that they were going down and they would be in the blood of other animals. It was just, it was like a slaughterhouse. Right. Why did you take it upon yourself to do it though? Because I didn't want them to experience that. And Well, I just knew that if I came in early and made a clean place for them and brought them out as if they were going for a walk and did it kindly, they wouldn't know. Foods ID. When I get to work at 5.15, I clock in. We're each standing in front of our, our own separate coop. Pull a bird out by the legs or, you know, most, most time grab both legs with one hand because it's harder for them to get away that way. And, uh, you know, pull the bird out, let them hang down, grab a leg, and then put them in the shackles. You know, and just, it's that over and over and over and over. There are four of us, so it's, you just, you have that and then you have until you're supposed to shackle another bird. By the end of the day, we from you know 5:45 to say we work to three, you know, or 3:30. Um, it's 50,000 birds is is the average output of this plant every day um, that they run. It's a lot of animals, a whole lot of animals. So I saw a turkey get sexually abused before it died today. Uh, this morning the line stopped and a guy got my attention and said, hey, look at this, and stuck his finger in the turkey's vagina. And like, it, you know, the birds are upside down, so he just like did this for like a good 30 seconds and would like do it and like look at it and be like, eh, eh, <laughs> eh, eh. And it was, uh, that's, you know, gross. This definitely uh, validates every notion I had 
uh, in my mind about, about slaughterhouses and about animal treatment. To begin with, most people won't, won't even work in a slaughterhouse.